hello there and welcome back to another review so today we're going to be having a look at black cat here starring jade lung and i think the film was made in 1991 directed by stephen shin uh, this film was originally a film that was going to be a straight up remake of the luke besson vehicle of femme nikita um, because of rights and i think disney buying them out or something that didn't actually come to fruition uh, stephen shin was forced to come up with black cat like a sort of a sort of like a look of femme nikita sort of type of film we also have Simon Yam in this film, um, too, along for the ride. I think Jade Lung uh, won an award in this movie for uh, for the movie, for a performance. I mean, it's a, it's a powerhouse uh, performance from Jade Lung. She really um, is really, it's worth watching this movie just for her performance as well because she's got a real intensity about her. Her character is, bit, you know, that you, she's unpredictable and there's a lot going on with this movie. There's a lot to say. Um, it's one of them movies that if you look at it objectively, it doesn't make all that much sense as the film goes along. Uh, certain parts of it don't, but it's, just, it's a great thrill ride. It's 90 minutes, there's action, there's governments, there's agencies, there's assassins, you know, you name it, it's there. Uh, and unfortunately, the film was always compared unfairly to La Femme Nikita. And although this film had quite like um, I'd never actually uh, seen before um, this release, Black Cat. I remember it being out. I remember it seeing it in the shots, but I've never actually um, have watched Black Cat until the release of this film here uh, from Eighty Eight Films. Um, I remember seeing, as I said, I remember seeing it in VHS. And I think it was like I think it was from. It must have been on the Made in Hong Kong label, I think, that released it, um, where I used to, that was the label that used to sort of, if you'd imagine, sort of, you know, like how Eureka and 88 films are now in terms of like Hong Kong movies. Made in Hong Kong, as well as Eastern Heroes, were the two um, main ones in terms of like Hong Kong movies uh, here in the UK on VHS. Um, but because I was too busy buying Summer Hungs and Jackie Chan's, I, could, I never actually got round to watching Black Cat, but fortunately I have now. Um, one thing you will notice right away with this movie, or when you look at it, back at, is it the locations. And this is when filmmakers in Hong Kong were starting to move out of their home territories and start to give the films more scope with locations that they use. The film opens in Canada, Canada, of course, but it's doubling for America, much like Jackie Chan later did with Rumble in the Bronx. I think largely because yeah, I think it's it, right. I'm thinking it's much cheaper uh, to shoot in Canada. That's why they often did that. Uh, the Hong Kong movie industry at the time was the, I mean, it was the third biggest in the world. I think beyond. Uh, behind like Hollywood and I think India but I think the Hong Kong film industry was like the third sort of biggest um, in turn in like in the world so I wanted to give the audiences more right the Hong Kong filmmakers they were just like looking to expand things to make it give their films more scope to give their films different locations to give the audiences something new something fresh um, and it's a shame the way they couldn't make this like a, it's, with this movie. Uh, it's a shame they couldn't make it like a double pack with Black Cat Two. And it really does annoy me sometimes when some of these companies and I, I, I'm sure it's a rights issue or whatever it may be. But it's it's I mean, um, if you look at what Eureka did with Warriors Two and Prodigal Son, that was perfect. You know, put them two films together, they go hand in hand. And it's a shame when there are two films that they don't just put the second one in like a double pack as well like um, another one they could have done it with is Bride with White Hair uh, by Ronnie Yu that by Eureka Classics they could have put the other film in with that as well but as I say it'd be wonderful they had Black Cat 2 here um, well, as I say it must have been a right thing but um, we'll be getting into Black Cat so right away I will mention I quite like the soundtrack to this movie I'll just say that right away um, it has like this nice groovy slick theme that runs through which suits the movie perfect, perfectly I think it was maybe David Chung who done the music uh, Danny Chung sorry who done the music um, anyway the film opens in America which is actually Canada and the first thing we're at the, where we are as an audience we're at this truck stop where Jade Lung is working as a waitress so this burly trucker type comes in and tries to grab her and she ends up putting like a fork through his hand and he slaps her we don't really learn anything about her backstory where she comes from her upbringing anything like that that sort of goes out the window um our initial reactions to this character is that she is unhinged like jade Lund's character is extremely unhinged and uh, almost mentally uh, sort of unstable in a way um you know how has she ended up there what drove her to do it like doing this you know these kind of things sort of are not answered but it doesn't really matter in terms of the movie i think the idea is she is just a lost angry soul actually i think that's the whole idea about the, her character in this i think she's just a lost um sort of uh, person that's not found her place and frustrated and that kind of thing uh, if you watch this scene the trucker who i have no idea who he is but he sounds german or at least european um 
And the cops you see, and also like the cops you see later on in the station, like one of them is British, um, you know, and all this is meant to be in America, but we're actually in Canada, and it's it's just it's just Hong Kong films, you know. So and it's a Hong Kong film. Um, so it's like, you know, get some like Caucasians in it. But it's sort of like when you've got a trucker who sounds like he's from uh, <laughs> sort of like middle, middle, middle of Europe or something. You've got British guys who are running um, like a meant to be an American cop shop and things like that. So, you know, make try and make sense of that. So Jade loses her job. She gets thrown out, goes back in to get her, like her arm on a car. After all this, the driver says she basically, she will sort of, give her all sex on him for cash, right, okay, uh, but instead, naturally, she just smashes his face with a rock, um, so, uh, you know, if worse knows as well, like with the English, I do believe, I think the English and the dialogue in this movie was all performed live, rather than sort of um, dubbing it and sort of syncing it up later on, I think this was all performed live in sync sound, and that not being overdubbed later on. After this, he goes to throw like Jade Lung through a truck stop window. Then, at like an, he throws her into like this arcade machine, and she stabs the crap out of him with some broken glass. I mean, talk at this scene at the opening of this movie. Talk about escalating quickly. This scene goes from like it just keeps on going. This this trucker who's like hates her right away, and then he's going. Then them two are going to sort of do get it on and then she smashes his face and this their, their fight just escalates so quickly and almost a comedic or well not it's not meant to be comedic but it's just the way it just comes out of nowhere and it just it turns into like this bloody brutal ball um a brawl to top it all off she then shoots him as well so the cops come to check and you think okay it's calmed down now but now but uh, nope she ends up shooting uh one of the cops too so we then go to the police station and as I say one of them is like a pure Londoner from like the East End or something. Anyone would think that Stephen Sheen was just casting like I say any Caucasian actors he could find probably but um, so she is arrested then they go through her things and tell her to strip naked then we have this horrible fat like female cop beating her up with like a truncheon for no reason whatsoever like this horrible like that cop just start beating the crap out of her just because she can uh, i mean she gives her a proper beat down jade overpowers her uh when she's being transported you watch one of the watch the one of the the new if you watch this movie or if you've seen this movie watch the news reader um who's giving uh this uh, this report now this lady in question either forgot her dialogue completely or well i can only just say was either just nervous or something like that um she stumbles her dialogue so it's you know so bad as i say but didn't or didn't even learn her dialogue it's only a short piece but if you watch it how she trips and stumbles with her dialogue um you'll see it when you see this news reporter you'll know what i mean so at her trial, someone comes in to assassinate Jade Lung in the toilet. She makes a break for it. Then outside, after a chase, she gets shot. And then we cut to an operating theatre where they put this, like, chip inside her. Then Simon Yam turns up, who is always very dashing, very handsome, as Simon Yam always is. And is just perfect in whatever he is in. Simon Yam, he's always dependable. And he's, he always seems, he's one of these actors that um, he, I can watch him in anything. He's a bit like, um, sort of like a Chow Yun Fat. He's got that smooth charismatic thing going on you've uh, you've probably seen simon yam in plot if you've seen a lot of hong kong movies i'm no doubt you have seen simon yam at some point uh, he gives her like a tablet and she is getting like massive migraines now the people that shot her who were trying to kill her was they like cia who yam works for is that right um I assumed it was so they could get her in their custody or something because these people at the courthouse, they just come after her to sort of take her out. There's no reason why anybody should be chasing her at that point. So I can only assume that that was the CIA or if I've completely missed something, maybe some of you out there can fill in the gaps for me. But that's how I interpreted it. But I, I could be wrong. Um, we will go, we'll, we'll go with that anyway. So he wants her to work for the government and her code name will be Black Cat. Um, what Jade does really well um, the, with her performance and how well it is and the intensity of it and how ferocious she is, um, she she just has this look on her face where you would not mess with her, but at the same time, she looks scared at the, at the same time as well. Um, very unpredictable, aggressive in nature, and like I say, emotional, all coming together at the same time. And like I say, it's a wonderful performance. So she really does get to show a wide acting range and like, her palette here. 
So she tries to escape to no avail and enters their training program. She learns weapons, self-defense, languages, these kind of things. We see that she has got comfortable and she's sort of personalized herself. She's quite happy. She understands. Because like I say, I think she's just like mentioned, she's just a lost soul. She doesn't really know where she wants to be. She doesn't know these like what her calling in life is. And she starts, you get the impression she is actually quite comfortable at this training facility. So one could argue she is quite content at this point. So Yan finally says you can go out now. She's on a plane and she's told there is a gun under a chair and after a target on a plane, which is a man dressed as an old woman for some reason. But we learn that this is all a simulation and she doesn't cope well and fails the test. After messing this up, she does say sorry, which is the first time my character has shown any sign of remorse, actually, when she says sorry after, like, you know, not failing this test. It's the first time she's actually said sorry um, in terms of what she, what's happened so far to her character. She, like she has this like she has this like determination to do better now. So one of the girls in the facility was going to have the chip and be recruited like the way like the way Jade was, but she kills herself. I mean Jade Lung didn't even get a choice. They just put the chip in her anyway. But this other girl there, they're gonna put the chip inside her and she ends up killing herself because she doesn't want the chip inside her or something. Jade let's say Jade they just they just bung the chip in Jade's and this other girl they like for some reason they're like, You've gotta have it done. It's not explained either where she come from, who this other girl is, but yeah, she just kills herself in the movie. It might have more of an impact that if she like had interacted with Jade a lot more and we actually got to know that character a lot more, it might have um, made what happened to her and what she did to herself a lot more impactful. So Yam and Jade are sort of bonding, going for a drive and having a kiss and a cuddle in a field. He takes her to like this wedding ceremony and kicks her out of the car and gives her a gun and ammo and says to them, take and she says to her, take them to the bride and the car will be waiting. So she's got to go into this wedding and do an assassination. So she shoots this bride at this wedding and all the staff and help have guns as usual. Um, you know, they've got to have uh, you know some uh, artillery on them and like I say, everybody there seems to have guns. You name it, the waiters, everybody. Um, wouldn't be a wedding without some, you know, some guns there. We have no idea who her target is, where, why she needs to die, who these people are. Where, you know, she is tasked with why she's tasked with killing her. Even at one point, the car a car pulls up with loads of gun wielding goons in it. The car gets blown up, and she escapes via a bike. And it goes a bit like sort of Goonies, ET at this point. The way when she's sort of cycling through the forest it just reminds me of something like the goonies with her riding the bike she ends up jumping off a bridge and escapes downstream so yam is like well done you completed the training now you've done it you've done your first thing um so our next hit is like this guy at a wildlife um sort of bird sanctuary type place and there's an awesome bass line at this point in the movie by the way i do pay attention to sort of soundtracks as well and this film like i mentioned earlier at the start of the review does have quite um a nice music to it that goes that does suit the film quite well so this guy that works there is snapping away at her and taking photos and she manages to find out where he lives for some reason. I mean, this is a, this is at night. So what she has done all day, she finds him at night and what she's done all day, all day is anyone's guess. She doesn't kill him even though he's like taking photos of her and he's a bit stalkerish. She does have a very nice denim skirt and white blouse on here though, by the way. So his name is Alan and she is, she is now calling herself Erica. So she actually likes this guy and picks him up and we go back to Hong Kong now. Um, and he, the whole idea is he thinks she is a journalist and that's what she does. That's her occupation. Um, they go back to his and she is like, so how many photos did you take of me? Like, it doesn't creep her out at all that this guy was just snapping away at her. It's just like, like most people will be reporting that to the police. Um, but like Jade Lung's character, she's like, no, like, so how many photos did you take? She thinks it's quite sweet. Um, she, then, she, then she has like this freak out because of the chip in her head. Now a lot of people find this romance, this romance section of the movie, uh, these the film's weakest point. I think a lot of people feel it's kind of like tagged on, it's kind of tacked on, and in many ways it is. It probably would have paid to not slow the film down as much as they did with this romance. I think the romance element of the film, with, where she has with Alan. It's, it's sort of squeezed in a little bit. It's um, it really doesn't really serve the film as well as it could have done uh, and it probably like I mentioned it probably would have paid not to slow the film down as much as they do 
Erica becomes a whole different person around this guy very quickly. Like she's smiling, she's happy, and that is some and it's somewhat out of context of the character we have known uh, in the movie up to this point. So she now has a boyfriend. Yan comes to visit, and Jade is now working for this like Caucasian guy. She so she gets called by a pager whilst her and Alan are in the cinema. And after dropping like that, this this she goes to this place. She drops this like metal girder on a guy, and she returns again. I have no idea who the guy was, why he needed to die, but she takes him out as well. I guess it is important, but even still, you know, it'd have been nice like to know what they've done, who are they. So Alan's still thinking she works for like this magazine house. So this woman recognises her from the past and her and her husband get blown up in the apartment due to a gas leak after he lights a cigarette. So this girl sort of recognises like Jade Lung's character and she's, she sort of knows her. And now I wish they could have in, like followed that on a bit more because I wanted to learn about more about her character, like where she come from. They, like this girl knows her, her and her husband, like they have a gas leak. He likes to sit on a cigarette. I mean, surely they would have smelt the gas surely like when he lights the cigarette um i don't know i mean if she does like glow trotting hit like trotting hits why did she have to die i mean surely there would be if she's like there's other people she's going around the globe and things like that why does she there's going to be other people around in the put like from the past that will might know her and what like the see what's the, the cia going to do just kill them all like every person she bumps into or randomly might see from her past i mean all right the chances are not that high but what what's this if that did happen she bumps into anybody else she knew or knew her from the past what are they going to do just bump them off as well um the chances are she was never going to see this woman again anyway but the cia who simon yam works for is like yeah, just blow them up Again, as we don't know about her past, it would have been nice if we could have found that out, um, like this woman that does recognise her. It would have been nice if we could have just learned a bit more about Jade Lynn's character and where she come from, what, why she turned out the way she did and that kind of thing. So her and Alan go to Japan. She has work to do, lots of snogging just to get to, uh, get across that they're in love and things like that. She gets a call about a mission and knives this guy at this spring. Alan catches her and just wants to know what, what she is doing and doesn't care about her past, which I think is fair. You know, he's not, he's not worried. He just wants to know what you're actually doing. So they get a call to leave and the cab driver wants to kill them. Jade knocks the guy out and they drive off. She knocks Alan out and leaves him there as it's too dangerous um, like to go with her. Alan comes like two and he gets arrested and he's carrying the gun like the cab driver had. Again, it all feels like sort of crushed in at the end. It all just does feel a bit thrown in. Um, say so Jade saves him and he gets shot. Massive. I mean, there's a massive shootout, big explosions here and her and Alan sort of drive off because she's trying to protect and save Alan. Yam comes in and is like, right, Alan must die, right? Because this CIA... They just, they're bumping off people like crazy, right? And now, like I said, they killed that woman that recognised her. Now they want to bump off Alan as well. I mean, you know, who else do you want to kill? You know, Jay's like, I will do it. And she shoots him on the left side of his chest as his heart is on the right side, we let, we've we learned earlier in the movie. Um, and they just leave his body there. The CIA ain't worried about the body. And the movie just ends there, really. It ends with her sort of driving off. That she sort of saved Alan by shooting him not in the heart and that's it and the movie just at no end no conclusion just Erica's uh, story shoots him to save him she experienced love kills loads of random people we don't know but you know for it's that's the kind of film that Black Cat is as I say you have no idea with every assassination that she does who they are why she's killing them the Alan romance is a bit like I say, it does slow the film down a little bit. It really didn't need that sort of element in the movie. It was quite, uh, I think Jade Lung was more than capable of carrying the film. You know, she does carry the film completely, but it, it'd be nice if it was just her without the Alan character, not to take anything away from the performance, but it really doesn't, wasn't necessarily needed. But um, it, it, I just wish the film could have had like more context uh, in some of the scenes, but it's a wonderful, uh, you know, I can't stress enough the performance here from Jade Lynn. And for 90, you know, 96, 95 minutes of entertainment, you could do a lot worse. Um, so if you're out there and you like films, like I say, like La Femme Nikita and things like that, um, you like a bit of espionage and governments and, you know, people on, you know, doing assassinations and things like that, then you're going to be right at home with Black Cat. Um, as I say, I'd never seen it before back in the day, so it's only because of this released I did get to see it but I did enjoy it. I've seen it a few times since I bought it and um, yeah so few plot holes here and there things that don't really make all that much sense but as I say for 95 minutes it's overall it's a really enjoyable movie with um, a powerhouse performance from Jade Lung so thank you very much indeed for watching I hope you enjoyed the review I'll see you soon Bye.
concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.